Hey everybody, Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. So at the time of me doing this video, there's actually a moderate risk for severe weather and I'm preparing to stream this. But we do have to keep in mind, hurricane season is on the way, so this video is gonna be delayed, so I do apologize for that. We're about a week out actually from hurricane season, so we're gonna go over our final outlook and even take a little sneak peek at what could lie ahead, look at some of the historic places that we could be looking for in regards to next month's activity here but there are some very concerning things that i do want to discuss here so for anyone that may have missed it we've done several outlooks already the links to these outlooks and some of the stuff that we're talking about will be in the top right hand corner here but the last outlook that we were really waiting on was the national oceanic and atmospheric associations outlook or NOAA is what it's often called in the weather community this just came out a couple of days ago so I know I'm late on that but I've been dealing with a lot on the personal side of things but in any case though we are talking about it now as we mentioned hurricane season starts from June 1st all the way up until November 30th and NOAA's predicting an 85 percent chance of an above normal season with 17 to 25 total named storms Basically, these are tropical storms. And then of those tropical storms, 8 to 13 of those are forecast to become hurricanes. And 4 to 7 of those hurricanes are predicted to become major hurricanes. The confidence that the forecasters have in this is at 70%. Normally, you don't have figures like this with this high a level of confidence, which is very concerning. And to compare this to some of the other stuff we've seen earlier this year, like when we did the outlook with AccuWeather and Colorado State University, 20 to 25 storms forecast, 8 to 12 hurricanes, 4 to 7 major hurricanes. But the unique thing that I've noticed with, college, with the uh, Colorado State University and also with AccuWeather is they're factoring in accumulated cyclone in energy or ACE, ACE. ACE would be almost compared to what CAPE is like for severe thunderstorms. So the higher the ACE, the stronger the cyclone could potentially get. With our numbers being well above average on both of these forecasts here, and a particular note with Colorado State's forecast here, west of the 60 degree west line here. So this is towards the Caribbean, where at that point, you would almost even go as far as to say that the only place the storm can go from that point is within land is a large and well above average amount of ACE available, which is really concerning. So with that, AccuWeather forecasted four to six direct US impacts. Now, what strength those storms could be at is still questionable. The jury's still out on that, but there are some signs that I'm keeping an eye on as well as we start the month of June but we'll get into that in just a moment here. Still, fact in the matter is, everywhere across the board, where this is a look at the weather channel, looking at well above average numbers in regards to the hurricane season, 24 named storms, 11 hurricanes, six of them above category three or major. And here are, and then here is the University of Arizona, actually. This is the first time I've actually ever used their forecast here, but again, same thing, name storms, well above average here. They decided on 21 out of the probability range being 18 to 24, still well above average. Five major hurricanes, it's the median number between their range here, 65% confidence on that. And major hurricanes, or excuse me, the five major hurricanes. 11 hurricanes with it being the mean number between nine and 13. Probability range at 65%. Everything's still above average here. This honestly has the lowest number in regards to ACE, but even then, if you have the predict, if you look at the prediction comparison to the median, still very much above average, which is alarming to say the least. And even the probability range is above average. So having this much confidence from this many outlets definitely is an eye. Hopefully, it's an eye opener for a lot of people today. Do need to be paying attention to the tropics this year. So that being said, let's go ahead and now take a look at all the names that we have available. Now, keep in mind, 
We do go use the alphabet for our, our tropical cyclone names in the Atlantic. There are not 26. There are actually less than 21. So there's a good chance we'll actually start with the second list. Now, as to what that list will be, uh, the jury's still out on that. I'm not exactly sure how they go about in that kind of situation because we don't really see that often. But the names we have available right now, Alberto, Beryl, Chris, Debbie, Ernesto, Francine, Gordon, Helene, Isaac, Joyce, Kirk, Leslie, Milton, Nadine, Oscar, Patty, Raphael, Sarah, Tony, Valerie, and William are the current names that we have right now. It doesn't matter the name of the storm at this point. Just know that if you do see videos from myself, any other YouTubers, or anything from your local news outlet discussing the tropics here, might be time to pay attention, especially if you're in an area that's susceptible to tropical impacts. So that being said here, let's actually go ahead and take a look at some things here. We're going to start out by actually taking a look at part of the reason why we have such a high probability of an active season. This is looking at earlier this morning today on the 25th, we're looking at the sea surface temperatures. This is in Celsius, by the way. So this you might not be able to quite understand this here, but if you want, I will have the formula to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit here. But usually when we get to about 22 to 24 degrees Celsius, we're getting to that 80 degree threshold, which is what you would need for tropical development here. And we already see a pretty broad area of that towards the main development region of the Atlantic already. And then it's very hot over here towards the Gulf, which is very concerning. Very reminiscent to last year, which was very concerning, especially regarding what would end up being Hurricane Idalia. Idalia strengthened very rapidly as it got close to the Florida coastline before its landfall. And it was in large part due to these elevated temperatures in the surface here on the sea, on the uh, sea surface. So could we see a similar scenario unfold here? Probability, actually, I would hate to say it. It's pretty high. And then if we look over here towards the 60 degree west line, here it is actually right here. I'm going to circle it so that way you can see it. This is the 60 degree west line. Anything west of this line here, this is towards where the Antilles are. Look what we have here at this point. We have almost all land masses left over. So any storm that would form over towards this region has a much higher probability of impacting land. Almost, almost certain, I would even say. Typically, the storms move in these directions, as I've mentioned before. Sometimes if they turn off quickly enough, they can go out to sea. But like I said, the probability of a landfall increases dramatically. So that being said... We do have to be on the lookout as time goes on. This is going to be in an environment where with the sea surface temperatures and the amount of energy available, this could pose a big problem. The thing to make note of here is the sea surface temperatures are going to increase as you see me make more of these tropical outlooks. As we go through hurricane season, you're going to see these temperatures increase. So definitely need to be paying attention to that. So also the other reason why the tropics are anticipated to become increasingly active is the fact that we are transitioning more and more towards a La Nina here. And I've talked about this a lot. If I could fit that in, I'd love to put a link in the top right hand corner regarding the Enzo pattern here. But notice how as we went towards earlier this year, we were dealing with what's called an El Nino where we have the positive phase here. As we've gone along, you've noticed the downtrend here. Those surface those sea surface temperatures over in the Pacific here are above average until we get towards mid-May where we're getting towards the neutral phase, which is where we are now. Now, if we were to go ahead and go to the Climate Prediction Center here, and it's no secret, you can see that we have a La Nina watch now, which basically means conditions are likely to shift into a La Nina and that there is a heightened chance, even here as mentioned, developing in June through August and July, September, and the chances are near or above 50%. And if we actually go ahead and take a look at the graph here, a La Nina starts at negative 0.5 degrees Celsius here. That is the number that we're looking for. And if we look 
into June, July, August, which is JJA right here. We look at the Climate Prediction Center console right here. Look at that. We're right on it. So La Niñas are historically known for having more active seasons. So with that combined with the sea surface temperatures being as they are, really the main thing that we're going to be looking at is the wind pattern here. And what I'm seeing from the wind pattern here, and I looked at this not too long ago before I started the video, is we have a lot of wind shear to start out the first couple of days of hurricane season. And it's ironic because when, when we look at tornadoes, we actually look for increased amounts of wind shear. It's kind of the opposite with hurricanes. But watch what happens as we continue to go forward here towards the Gulf in particular. We're expecting shear to be pretty strong over here towards this main development region. Usually that doesn't pick up until the end of the year. But watch what happens as we go further along here. This is the date right here. It's May 28th, 29th, 30th. Look at how the wind shear is slowly starting to dissipate. This is June 2nd. We still have that wind shear here. But notice we're seeing less and less of it as time goes on. And by the time we get into that first week here, look at how it's kind of dying off more and more. So I do have my concerns that we could even get an early system in June, which is a little bit more rare considering that June usually is a slow starter, is usually a slow start to the season. On average, we may get one storm every two years, and usually these will form closer to home. So we would be looking towards an area like the Gulf of Mexico, for example. Do I think one could mature quickly and form into a major hurricane? likelihood of that is relatively low but we are as you saw earlier we already have those sur those sea surface temperatures right where we would want them to be the sheer the wind shear lightening up here definitely helps favor that a little bit more but really it's just going to kind of be more of a now cast situation as i would say in regards to the potential for any tropical development down the line here then also over here towards the Caribbean is another point of interest, but I think wind shear is still pretty strong here. And then of course, main development region, we already mentioned wind shear is pretty strong over there. But there's another way we can actually get a look at this here. And this is by looking at our ensemble members here. We're looking for our pressure centers here. The areas that have the red numbers, that's low pressure. The areas with the blue are areas of high pressure here. And we're looking for a focused area where we'll start to see the yellows and the oranges come into play where we would have maybe an increased threat of tropical development here. And of course, starting out, I don't really see a whole lot. There is a little something that tries to pop up here, but of course, like we said before, wind shear is not really favoring that. It will help increase shower and storm activity over towards the Caribbean here, towards Cuba, towards Haiti, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, of course. I don't expect a high probability of anything forming up here in the short term. Towards the longer term, though, of course, even though things are more uncertain, we'll have to watch and see how things develop with that. I still think overall the wind pattern is not super favorable to start out the season. But, of course, as we mentioned before, it's a long season. And then it's a long month. It's 30 days. So we could see something in June. We'll have to see how things pan out here. But... As of right now, the good news is it doesn't look like we're going to have an immediate threat. That being said, though, let's go ahead and take a look at the entire Atlantic as a whole here. If I can get it to work. I don't know why I haven't been able to. Why I didn't have that set up entirely. But this is the North Atlantic. This gives us a whole entire view. This gives us a view of the main development region. And then we do this right here. It's been a while since I've used Tropical Tidbit, so I'm a little rusty. But if you look as a whole here, this is the main development region. Pretty quiet, of course. And we can anticipate a lot of that continuing. Like I said, really the most favorable areas during the month of June, as far as the Atlantic's concerned, is going to be really close to the U.S., really close to home. So, like I said, good news is right now, not expecting a whole lot to start out the season. Of course... It's kind of like a little uh, slow burn, if you will, in regards to how hurricane season plays on. 
the peak months are usually towards August and September. Sometimes July can get really busy, but more often than not, August, September, and sometimes October could be pretty hectic. So this is the time to prepare now, really. That's really what I'm getting at here. Just trying to keep you guys as weather aware as I can here. Hopefully you guys are already doing that without me. But in any case here, we're going to call this one a video and prepare for the live stream tonight for severe weather at the time of me making this video. But that being said, I hope you guys enjoy. Make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that share button as well. Because this is going to be some crucial information that we have here. Till then, take care, have a good night, and I'll see you next time.